Will he not leave the ninety-nine in the hills and go in search of the stray? And if he finds it, amen, I say to you, he rejoices more over it than over the ninety-nine that did not stray. <coughs> in just the same way, it is not the will of your heavenly Father that one of these little ones be lost. My sisters, my brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning again, everyone. Good morning. Last night, as uh, we were sitting in the lounge, uh, Ken said to me, well, I hope you know that um, tomorrow is our uh, vows, and uh, well, you know the homily says, uh, no pressure. <laughs> but then I heard uh, Brother Dennis Malloy speak this morning, quoting the Irish Christian brother who said, we are not in a time of transition, that's just a little bit too soft, that we are in a time of chaos. No pressure. <laughs> Uh, I am deeply honored to be able to share a few <coughs> homiletic moments uh, before the uh, beautiful and powerful ceremony of your commitment as brothers of St. John Baptist de La Salle and the words of your uh, brother visitor, Dennis. But I think if you uh, look around this room, there are probably not a homily needed, nor um, could you really have a more hoped-for future with these men and women who support you. I do remember uh, being a young brother priest my first year, and I was uh, very, very um, full of enthusiasm. Uh, and knowing how to do it better than anyone who has ever gone before me. <laughs> and uh, I shared yesterday that I was on a swimming team, so I was uh, somewhat competitive, and I was determined that I was going to be the holiest priest than anybody else. And God knows did I work at it. And I worked at it, and I worked at it. And I wasn't doing too well. <laughs> and I remember we had a priest, uh, an older priest, who was the director of the community. His name was Father Roger. He had the wonderful gift of being able to be a brother, a friend, and a father to everybody in the community. And I said to him, Father Roger, you know, sometimes I don't feel holy enough to be a priest. And he said, that's good, kid. <laughs> but you're not. <laughs> he said, kid, come on. He said, people don't want their priests, their brothers, to be holy. Pickled in holy water. He said, they want, they want us to be human, loving. Caring, embrace them. And the only way that's going to happen for you, kid, is if you fall on your backside <laughs> and pick yourself up and get some help to do it. Don't worry about being holy. Great, great advice. I'm sure you already know that one of the best things about belonging to a brotherhood is that it's uh, full of older, wise men. Uh, human beings who have long ago let go of being taken with themselves and who let their hearts become vulnerable, who have fallen on their backsides, gotten up again, and that is a cause for hope. But today, 
we're taking with you. Your promises, your renewals, your vows to a lifelong journey of being held in the palm of God's hand, molded into the brother he has called you to be in a profound witness to all of us who gather here this morning to support you. Yes, today uh, we gather, don't we? Because more than anything else, we believe in the power of love. It's so great that it seeks to commit itself and to give itself away. Uh, as our friend and brother Charlie Kitson once said, I am not a brother until I fall in love. I am a brother because I fell in love. And fall in love you will, hopefully, many times. Keeping your hearts vulnerable so that your students know that they have a safe place with you. It's how we keep from getting pickled in holy water and staying human and credible because you know that kids know when we're real and when we're fake. You know, the second reading that you chose today, uh, Paul the Apostle is writing to the Christian community in Rome, and they've been through it. Loss upon loss, uh, eaten up by lions, thrown into prison, tortured, abused. Sort of like a faculty meeting, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul himself has been uh, shipwrecked on the rocks, trying to bring it home to harbor, throwing one thing after another off the boat so that they don't sink and they can sail ahead. And giving us permission, perhaps, to throw some things overboard before we cast our nets on the other side. So that we're not burdened so much by so much. And Paul quotes the Old Testament. How beautiful on the mountain tops are the feet of one who brings good news. Hey brothers, uh, your feet today, in the presence of your brothers and sisters and your mom, your beautiful families, friends, are being called today into beauty. And I don't know if there can be anything more noble or necessary to do with your life than teaching a child and giving them hope. Especially those banned and abandoned by poverty and the streets. To make a kid feel he is worth vowing your whole life. It might be the mountaintops of Papua New Guinea then, or the streets of the Lower East Side, Anwar, or the hills of Pittsburgh, Tony, Steve, or the walk-ups of the Bronx, David. I was lucky enough, uh, being provincial, I get an assistant, and uh, one of my assistants is driving around with me all the time, and bilingual, was uh, a young man who had been to St. Raymond's High School and thought Brother Frank walked on water. And we, uh, I said to him one day, um, what do you think of the Christian brothers? 
He said, what do I think of the Christian brothers? Father, they saved my life. No pressure. <laughs> here, but Wes was, has been driving us around all week. And he was driving me around, I was saying, well, you know, it was south, nice, nice campus, what do you want to do, uh, engineering, blah, blah, blah. So what was the best thing about the south? He said, oh, man, hands down, the Christian brothers. No pressure. <laughs> you will enter now into a life of Forgiveness. A forgiveness of uh, yourself and of your brothers when you find that the one person in the district you never wanted to live with lives with you. <laughs> but we'll be called to forgive over and over again, including our own inadequacies to uh, to be as real as the kids hope we will be. And if religious life is anything, it's the sacrament of friendship with Christ, with someone in your life that you can walk with and say anything to and knows all the secrets and all the skeletons. I pray for you that uh, you have that kind of intimacy with Christ and with someone in your life. Any open heart at times will become vulnerable. But in you, life gets renewed over and over again. As they say in the big book of AA, beginnings are important even if we have to begin over and over and over again. So we're with you as you cast your nets to the other side, that you walk with beautiful feet as brother. No pressure. <laughs> Just live Jesus in your hearts. And now I give you to your brother and visitor. <clears throat> setting the table and thank you for your beautiful feet and uh, and and really the, the thing about your lives right now is that you have been on this Camino this journey and this discernment of uh, you know deepening <coughs> your incorporation into the body of the society if you will and we are very blessed and, and you know and your discernment and your walking with us. And what we celebrate is really your humanity. Each of you have been with us for a number of years, and so you know us close up. You know us with our warts and our flaws. And thanks be to God, you know that there are very few perfect men among us, <coughs> and nor do we expect that of you. And it is, as Father Bob was saying, it, 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 it is the flaws, it are the flaws that we have are what make us lovable. They make us human. Uh, they, they give us, this, they make us humble. And the beautiful thing about having brothers, my God, I've been the visitor for nine years. The brothers never hesitate to keep you humble. <laughs> it must be great to be a bishop. I want to be a bishop. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Each of you is personification of hope for the future. You are hope for the future, broken into this moment. And, and we celebrate this moment with, with great joy, with great love. And in case we have not come right out and said to you recently that we love you very much, Stephen, we love you very much. David, we love you very much.
Tony, we love you very much. Anwar, when's the last time I told you that I love you? <laughs> <laughs> we love you very much. And so this is really an act of love today. It's, it's about hope, but it's also about love, and certainly it's about faith. And you know, these, it's really the theological virtue that we've been talking about this week, you know, that our hope and our faith is in Jesus. And these theological virtues are God's love infused into our hearts and God's assurance to us that the Holy Spirit is present and active in our lives. No matter, on good days and in bad days. And I, I appreciate the fact that you talked about that big book of AA and that life is about a lot of opportunities to start over again because rarely do we get it right and keep it right for very long. The whole idea of uh, having a good life, I think, is more about just staying with it and keeping at it, because being perfect uh, is an illusion, and being happy is an illusion, and being at peace is an illusion. There are moments where we're happy. There are moments when we're at peace, and there are moments when we're getting it done pretty well but they're momentary, and we have to be able to let those moments go and then to receive them and celebrate them when they happen again. And that's all part of this journey with us. And so at this time, I would like to ask Stephen and Brother Rich Bucina to come up as Stephen renews his commitment, his promise to the brothers. Where is that Brother Rich Bucina? <laughs> So Stephen, we thank you for journeying with us during this past year in the residential apostasy at Jeremy House. We are grateful, we are grateful for your ongoing discernment that has led you to this recommitment today. Let me ask a few questions. Are you resolved to continue in our way of life and to mature in it so that you may follow Jesus wholeheartedly in this institute of the Brothers of the Christian School? I am. Are you ready to continue learning the full meaning of our five vows according to the rule of the Brothers of the Christian Schools? I am. Are you resolved to deepen the characteristic spirit of the Institute, the spirit of faith expressing itself in zeal for the salvation of young people? I am. Thank you. May the Lord grant you the grace to fulfill what you have done so well.
thank Brother Joseph Mann, who has accompanied these brothers from the time they left Jeremy House. Thank you, Joe, for standing up here with them and, and being such a beautiful part of their lives and a beautiful part of our lives, too. Wow. So, do you know what you're getting yourselves into? <laughs> That's the first question. Can I get a yes? yes? That's a good thing. Okay, so let's do this. Let me ask the two of you if you will come up here. And let me ask the three of you if you would just slide down here a bit so the moms can see these handsome punks up here. <laughs> so, wow. Okay. Yes, and we would invite your sponsors to come up, Rich Galvin and Brother Tim Frail. <laughs> I guess you didn't always pick the best man. <laughs> but God can do great things, even with very flawed instruments. <laughs> So, you know, maybe before we, let me just delay these vows for a few moments. <laughs> Give one last chance. But I guess I would like to say to you, Mrs. Kalinowski, and to you, Mrs. Martinez, how grateful we are to you for raising such beautiful young men, you know, who have become disciples and apostles, who have become wonderful brothers of the Christian schools. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your generosity in sharing them with us so closely. So, Anwar or Ed, could I just ask you to, Ed, could you just tell Anwar's mom how much we love him, how much she is a part of our family, And could you ask her, too, if it would be all right if I came over and gave her a hug and a kiss? <laughs> <laughs>
to remain in the Institute of the Brothers of the Christian Schools all the days of my life. Thanks be to God. In baptism, you have been consecrated to God's service. Are you resolved now to unite yourself ever more closely to God by professing your final vows as a brother of the Christian schools? I am. Are you willing, with God's help, to undertake a life of association of service for the poor through education, stability in the Institute, obedience, chastity, and poverty, and to remain faithful to these vows for life? I am. Are you willing to strive with all of your heart to love God and your neighbor by living the gospel with joy and by following the rule of the brothers of the Christian schools? I am. May God, who has begun this good work so beautifully in each of you, bring it to fulfillment. Thanks be to God. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, prostrate with the most profound respect before your infinite and adorable majesty, I consecrate myself entirely to you to procure your glory as far as I shall be able and as you will require of me. For this purpose, I, Brother Anwar Martinez Ramos and Brother Kenneth Kalinowski, Promise and vow to unite myself and to remain in society with the brothers of the Christian schools who are associated to conduct together and by association schools for the service of the poor. I promise to go wherever I may be sent and do whatever I may be assigned by the body of the society or its superiors. Wherefore, I promise and vow association for the service of the poor through education, stability in the institute, obedience, chastity, and poverty in accordance with the bowl of approbation and the rule of the institute. I promise to keep these vows for all my life.
brothers of ours uh, some sign of peace. So please come forward, brothers. <coughs>
glorious God, pour out your love. For the people of France, as they undergo the tragedies there, we pray to the Lord. Generous God, pour out your love. Thank you, God of life. Thank you for this celebration of lives dedicated to you. As we offer our prayers to you, hear and direct us ever more closely to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the greatest and more of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. <laughs> loving and merciful God, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet, and so set us an example of love for one another. Accept, we pray, the sacrifices of our service, and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, <coughs> always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our God and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so we exalt and bless your name with all the saints and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Amen. Hey. 
deemed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of our lives. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, given for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> the mystery of faith. among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and to charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with our bishops and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith only you can know. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. John Baptist de La Salle, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the <laughs> Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Lord, we pray for every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, <coughs> Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.